Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm TZ Sweezy, and in this video, I'm going to be covering the skin modifier. Now, the skin modifier uses vertices and edges to create a skinned surface. So what I want you to do is I want you to think of the vertices as joints, and the edges that connects those vertices as bones. In fact, there's even a create armature button that allows you to create armatures to, you know, pose and edit the objects, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Now, the main point of using the skin modifier is so that you can create a decent base mesh, which you will then take into sculpt mode and sculpt a lot more detail on using dynamic topology and the sculpt brushes. This is really good for getting quick base meshes that you can go into sculpting with. So without further ado, let's start talking about some of these settings. We could start talking about the create armature, but we're actually gonna talk about that last. So let's go into edit mode real quick and talk about how the skin modifier has changed our topology. Well, without the skin modifier, we still have a cube, but remember that the skin modifier treats every edge like a bone, and then it tries to map skin around that, meaning mesh around that bone, so that if we were to apply this modifier, we would go in and this is the topology that would have been created. But instead, uh, what we can do is we can actually extrude off of vertices here. So if we extrude off a of vertice, it tries to then add on that extra geometry by skinning it on there. And you can access the underlying mesh by jumping into wireframe mode, or when in not wireframe mode, you can uncheck the limit selection to visible, which then allows you to choose all of your vertices inside or that have been hidden by the skin modifier. All right, so let's take a look at some of these selected vertice options here. And we'll start with mark loose and clear loose. So by default, a branch vertex, which is a vertex that has three or more edges connected to it. So in this cube shape right now, every vertex except this one is a branch vertex. But a branch vertex will generate extra edge loops around it that will try to keep the output tightly mapped to how the skin modifier is supposed to look. But you can remove that tight wrapping by clicking mark loose which you can now see stretches the output between all of the adjacent vertices. So it looks like they all kind of come in, there's a little square section, and then it kind of stretches that output out to here. And if we change the size of that, which I'll talk about in just a second, it changes how that output is stretched. If you don't like that effect though, you can hit clear loose and it will once again map it tightly around that branch vertex. So marking loose comes in really handy when you are working with hands or feet or something that needs to branch but needs to kind of have a smooth branch away from it. On the topic of branch smoothing, we have an option here for branch smoothing, actually. And if we increase this, you can see that it tries to smooth out the transition between the branches. If I were to you know, pull off a vertice this way and we decrease the branch smoothing, in fact, maybe this will be easier to see if we add a subdivision surface modifier to it. But with the branch smoothing not there, or at all, it's still kind of smooth because of the way that it's created. But if we increase it, it smooths out these branch vertices a lot more so that it's a lot rounder of a corner instead of that sharper uh, edge that we've got. All right, now let's talk about the root vertice. Okay, so in order for the skin modifier to work well, each set of connected vertices must have a root to it. Now the root is actually used for calculating rotations for connected limbs like these and these, but it's also used for creating the armatures. So it's the root of origin for bones when the armature gets created. Now you can change the root vertex because sometimes changing the root will give you some slightly different effects by clicking mark root and mark root. Now, since each set of connected vertices can only have one root, hitting the mark root will cause that vertice to be marked as root and you don't have to worry about unchecking or manually unmarking any other roots. Okay, with only a few settings left, let's talk about how we actually change the size of our mesh skin around the bones and joints of our vertices and edges. So we actually have two options to do that. We can open up the properties panel and affect the radius of the X and Y here by simply putting in a new number. Radius on the X being 0.5, and then we could say again 
or what we can do is hit control A and then scale in or scale out and you can see how it shrinks or expands the skin without it. Now doing scale on a particular vertice, just hitting S isn't going to do anything. It is in fact control A. And while you're doing control A, you can actually lock this transformation onto either the radius of the X or the radius on the Y axis just by hitting that key. So we could widen it by hitting the X axis or we can deepen it by hitting the Y axis. It's a little different than your standard X and Ys, but it, the process is pretty much the same. And then let's say we scaled it along the X axis. Sorry, we don't scale it. We control A along the X axis. And now we end up with a radius of 0.984 and 0.228. And we want to not leave it like this. Let's say we would rather have it come up with a more equalized number. We have an option down here to equalize the radii here for all the selected ones. And what it's going to do is it's going to find a median point between X and Y, and then it's going to set the radius of X and Y to that median point. So when I click equalize radii, it says that the median point was 606, 0.606, and it has set that median point just so. Now we can see here that the mesh is being created a little weird. It's no longer being completely you know, safe. So we might wanna play around with some of these. You could probably mark it as loose, get yourself a little bit of a different shape. That's not what we want. We could try changing the root to another place and see if that would affect things. Or as most likely is the case, we could just scale it down as far as that mesh is concerned and then extrude off another piece that we could then take out to the uh, max height that we wanted. All right, and that's pretty much it, but let's talk about the create armature. So real quick, I'm just going to select everything, hit Alt M, merge it at the center, or actually we're going to Alt M and merge it at the cursor. So that gives me uh, the point back on the median point here. And then I'm just going to create a real quick tree. Now I did just extrude off this vertice, but it doesn't have a root anymore. And since it doesn't have a root, it's no longer displaying the skin. So if I were to pull this, let's say off to here, off to here, what we need to do is re-add a root. Now that we've added a root back, it's now giving us the skin wrapped around it as before. We'll say here's a branch. Maybe it comes off this way here. All right. Now remember, the skin modifier is not really meant to give you all that much detail. It's just used for setting up base meshes. So with this tree-like thing that I'm working with, what you want to do is come up with the kind of large limbs if you were making a tree. You'd want to start with the large limbs and then go into sculpt mode, turn on dynamic topology, and pull off the smaller branches using the snake hook brush with the dynamic topology turned on. All right, and then we can kind of see these if we turn on branch smoothing, it tries to smooth that up a little bit. We can mark that as loose, which would work uh, pretty well if we subdivided that and then hit shift V to move the vertice up there. Then we could change, we could play around with the root setting. Again, if we wanted it to change a little appearance, we could say this is the root now, or maybe this is the root, and you can see how it could change your appearance. So if we go back here and we move this vertice back up, and then let's mark this as root, right? Notice that there was, we'll undo that. So go back down here, mark root, and we'll mark this as a root. It now maps a little better here, but now we get inverted faces down here on the bottom. That's a real quick fix. Just hit control N when you're going back into edit mode before you go to sculpt things. And that will make the faces convert back to the right method. Or you could just move the root back down here and all the faces are good. And then just play around with your vertices. So the skin modifier, super useful. Then all you gotta do to add in those armatures is just go to object mode again, hit create armature. And now you can see that an armature has been applied. Go into pose mode and then pose your tree or your you know your bones in the way that they need to be posed and that's all there is to the skin mod
So the skin mod is a really good tool for creating base meshes, and I hope that you have seen that now in this video. The last couple of things I could talk about, but I'll cover in future videos, is how to use the skin modifier in conjunction with a mirror modifier and how to get good results doing that. Uh, but the next video that I cover with the skin modifier will be how to create a bust base for sculpting heads. All right, that should be a very short video. So I'm TZ Sweezy, and I will see you in the next video.